Today's video is going to be cool for two reasons. First, if you're one of those people that's just starting to go down the pathway of learning about software development and coding, and you aren't quite sure which tools you want to use starting off the bat when you're learning about those things, this video is for you. Second, I'm trying to push my stepkids down that same path as far as getting interesting learning how to code and software development. And I decided to have a friend of mine build out a computer specifically with the purpose of setting it up in a way where they can learn how to do those things. So in essence, this is going to be a unboxing video of a new PC for my stepkids that's built out uh, with a whole bunch of different tools that will help them learn how to code. All right, so I'm gonna go and unbox this stuff get it all cabled up, powered on, and then we'll come back and take a look and see what we have going on. Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight video. Thanks for coming back to the channel. And if this is your first time, I hope you like it enough that you end up sticking around and making it your new spot for cyber network knowledge. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about this new computer that I got back here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the tool sets that I have installed on here, which are gonna be good for folks who are starting to go down the path of getting into software development and coding. As always, please make sure that you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. That way you don't miss out on new content when I drop new videos. So I've spent some time uh, getting this computer up and running, hooking it up. Uh, it was shipped out here to the house maybe a week or so ago. So I've just been waiting for the right time to uh, do the configuration on it and get it up and running. Um, I gotta say, I'm super impressed with it right off the bat. Uh, my friend did an awesome job putting this together. Um, it's kind of funny how it all came about because she put out a tweet, I don't know, maybe a, a couple months ago, asking if anybody was interested in having a computer built for them. Uh, and I thought she was kind of joking, but I took her up on it anyway. And the process of working together to end up building something that was going to be great for the kids was awesome. Um, I, I put that forward from the beginning that that's what the purpose of it was. So we had a lot of back and forth as far as making sure we got the right components from a, a processor perspective and a memory perspective, got a case and lighting inside of there that looked really awesome. Especially, uh, I didn't wanna go too far one way or the other as far as color scheme because I didn't want my stepdaughter to feel like the computer was more for my stepson. So uh, we did a really good job of incorporating in uh, their favorite colors, red and green. So uh, just really, really cool process as far as working through that. And then uh, we went through the process of identifying which type of software we'd wanna get put on there. Now, as I said, the box itself, the main purpose is to get them kind of interested in software development. Although my stepdaughter's a little bit more interested kind of in different types of visual design stuff. So she'll definitely end up using it for, for part of that as well. I put out some uh, questions out on Twitter to kind of get some feedback as far as which tools and applications would make sense. Of course, since this is for kids, I didn't want to go out and spend too much money on software and stuff like that. I wanted to go with all open source stuff. So uh, in going back and forth uh, through the build process, we identified uh, a nice collection of different software, uh, even put in some things that are more on the uh, cybersecurity hacking side as well that uh, maybe I could kind of push them, maybe I could kind of push the kids towards that too, um, which would be awesome. So I'm going to just hop on this. We'll take a, a look at uh, the specs of the box, what we applications we have on there, uh, and the reasons why we chose the applications that are on there. So, all right, let's get at it. So first things first, this is an absolutely gorgeous box. It is really great. I think the kids are gonna love the fact that they can actually see the components that are inside of there. The lighting, the different fans, the GPU, all, all of that in there is, is really, really awesome. 
to kind of add to that, to at least make kind of the overall package, I ended up going on Amazon and found this really great keyboard here that lights up. You can actually change the colors of the keyboard and the mouse. So I figure my stepdaughter and stepson can actually modify this to whatever colors they want whenever they're actually using the computer. Um, I might even find or try to find a way to tie that back to their specific profile on the machine. So maybe when they log in, it will automatically set the, uh, the color coding on here. We'll see if I can do that or not. Also got this great curved screen off of Amazon. It's, it's just a 24 inch curved screen. Uh, my main thing with this was I didn't want any additional speakers. So it's not like they're gonna be using this for anything where they need high quality audio, but the speakers built into the back of the monitor will end up working out pretty well if they're watching you know, YouTube videos or, or something like that. All right, so let's hop into what's going on inside. So something cool right off the bat is this readme text file, which breaks down all of the different applications that are installed, what they're for, the way that the partitions is broken up on the machine, and a few other uh, little bits of info that's going to be helpful. So I, I really, I really appreciated this. I thought this was a, a really nice touch, um, and it was cool to spin up the box, get in there, log in, and, and see this here. So uh, kind of talking a little bit through this. Um, you know, we got the C drive is where all the operating system stuff is. All the other applications that she installed um, are on the D drive, which is cool. Um, the motherboard has built-in Wi-Fi, so that was super easy right off the bat. Um, it actually is really cool. The antenna and stuff like that actually is magnetic, so you can't even see it. But, there it is. So, that's kind of neat. You can kind of just hide it to the back. You don't even know it's there. All right, so let's hit up the specs first, and then we'll get into the applications. So, right off the bat, um, we have an AMD processor uh, with six cores, which is pretty cool. Uh, the GPU is uh, a GTX 960, which is pretty decent. Uh, the motherboard in this is, is pretty awesome. I like that a lot. Um, has 16 gigs of RAM, upgradable to 32. So that's pretty cool. So two drives here. Uh, one is a two terabyte solid state drive, which will be very helpful. Um, that's actually gonna be my D drive where the majority of the stuff is gonna get put on. All right, so the first application that we have on here, uh, it's a lightweight application, kind of like task manager. Nothing, uh, this isn't necessarily related to computer programming, per se, or learning how to code, but it's kind of cool uh, to be able to get a quick snapshot of what's going on on the box as far as CPU, GPU usage, storage, system specs. You can kind of click down into different things and see what's going on there. Um, you can do some overclocking here if you want to. Yeah, kind of a cool little tool. Another tool that's on here that's not necessarily uh, specifically code or development related, but it could kind of be, um, and that is VirtualBox. I specifically asked for that to be on there um, just because if the kids do want to start messing with different uh, ISOs and stuff like that, it's, it's always a good idea to have some type of um, virtualization software on your computer, some type of hypervisor. So um, even though I love uh, VMware uh, and that's what I have on, on my stuff, um, since we're talking about trying to go the open source and free route, then VirtualBox is perfect in this instance. Another thing, not completely tied to software development, but again, kind of starting to go uh, in that direction is uh, WSL. So a uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Started to get this kind of installed here. I haven't necessarily picked out which version of Linux I want to get on here. Um, any recommendations? Uh, love to hear it. I, <laughs> I for a second, almost uh, went and downloaded Kali, and then I was like, ah, you know what? Maybe we'll hold this off. Maybe, uh, maybe Ubuntu or something like that would be a little bit better. I don't necessarily know that I want to go and throw uh, Kali on here uh, right off the bat and start pushing the kids towards that, um, which would probably be a bit much. So baby steps, but definitely having WSL there uh, ready to go is a, a cool option to have. 
All right, so getting into the tools that are a little bit more aligned with development and things like that. This first one uh, you've probably heard of before, and that's VS Code. Um, I've used this a little bit before. Um, it's a text editor, but it's so much more. I mean, you can integrate it with GitHub. You can do uh, other types of integration with other types of software development and things like that. Um, I think that I've done, I'm trying to remember if I was doing some stuff with Ansible before and I was using this, I think so. So um, I think this is just a, a great open source tool to have and probably something that uh, as the kids start to go down that path, they'll use quite a bit. So what learning path for coding uh, would not be complete without Python? So this is an obvious one that you definitely go with. I mean, the VS Code and Python uh, are two right off the bat that make the most sense. So definitely want to get Python on here. Um, it'd be cool if we can get the kids to start doing some scripting in Python. That would be even more awesome if I get them doing that with some networking stuff. We'll see how that goes. But definitely wanted to get Python on the box. So. Obviously, you talked about Python. If you're going to have Python, you need to have Java on the box as well. If you're going to do any type of Java programming or run Java apps, so we have that. Also, uh, a third option that we have on here is a Ruby installer. I don't know anything about Ruby, so uh, it's awesome that it's on here. I think I had to screw around with Ruby, well, Ruby on Rails a few times with some Kali issues. Um, I don't know if I made things better or worse. So um, we'll kind of uh, leave that there. We'll probably push the kids more towards Python initially. So uh, then there's some other kind of cooler uh, development apps here that might be a little bit more aligned uh, with some stuff that kids might want to do. So it kind of does help that my friend who built this out, uh, she is a mobile developer and is into gaming quite a bit. So we have uh, a little bit of a flavor for each of those. So we got the, uh, the Android Studio, which is used for making Android web apps. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I think uh, she said that she also downloaded Flutter on here as well. Um, I'm not familiar with that, so I'll have to uh, look into that. I assume that that is another uh, mobile uh, web app development tool. And the other cool tool that she put on here is Unity, which is for uh, coding and development for video games. So that might, uh, that might be something cool that they'll definitely want to uh, get involved with right off the bat, I'm sure, as soon as they see that. So that's it. That kind of wraps up what we have on here, ready to go. I've already started to put some other software on here, getting antivirus and other types of protections on there. Uh, the kids won't be home for a few days, so uh, they'll just have to wait. I did send them a, a little video and they're super excited once they saw what it was. So um, recap, you're getting into software development. You're wondering what free tools are out there that would be useful to you. VS Code for using as a text editor, integrating with GitHub, a whole bunch of other things with Ansible and all that goodness. You're going to want it. It's free. Uh, become familiar with it. Second, Python. I mean, that's pretty obvious. You're going to want to do that. You're going to want to get Java on there. If you're going down the mobile apps route, then Android Studios is going to be uh, a cool thing to do. Um, from the video game perspective, as I mentioned, Unity is pretty cool too. So there's I don't know, five or six things right there. I'm sure other people um, have other recommendations. Um, I actually threw that out there on Twitter uh, to get some other recommendations. Might drop those here somewhere um, because some of those were good, not only for tools, but also some other websites and stuff like that that might be good to uh, kind of start to get spun up on all of that stuff. I admit I am not uh, an expert in coding or scripting or any of those things. Um, I've taken some classes, I've done some stuff. I can look at things and kind of read it, but it's definitely not my forte. So actually I'm hoping to be learning stuff just along the way uh, as the kids are learning stuff. So anyway, that's it. Um, really appreciate you checking out the video. Um, again, as always, hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Let me know what you want me to cover next. 
this next week, I got my Azure uh, Fundamentals exam. As soon as I'm done with that, I'm hopping back into my Juniper studies. I still need to knock out that Cloud Cert and the DevOps Cert. So hopefully it uh, won't take too long with that. Um, anything else, leave a comment down below. Appreciate the feedback. Go get at it. Be safe. We'll talk soon. All right. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.